We finally made it to Red Bluff Bay, saw more grizzlies on the shore, explored the bay and the river, checked out the big waterfall, docked with a lot of current at Warm Springs, and explored the area. Join us and our crew on our adventures as we explore the amazing world around us. Welcome to our boat and home, Sea Venture. We hope your time with us is both entertaining and inspiring. We pulled out of Takats Bay and we're now in Chatham Strait and the, wa uh, the water is actually pretty good and uh, we are working our way up to El Cove. It is a very short two mile jaunt. If you're a subscriber, thank you. If not, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we have a new video out. And if there's something we could be doing better or specific content that you would like to see, please put it in the comments below. And please stay tuned to the end of the video where we'll have our weekly Q&A. The scene at the back of the boat after having anchored for the evening. It's sprinkling a little bit here in El Cove. It was raining a few minutes ago, so it's letting up a little bit. And uh, in short order, hopefully, we will uh, get the dinghy down and go check some things out around here. The sun peaked out a little bit, and then uh, it was raining and sunny, and now it's raining and cloudy, and you know, you just can't wait for the sun sometimes, so you just go for it. This bay gives a sense of being tiny, but uh, Sea Venture looks pretty little here. Going down and up. Woo. Wow. All right. Whoa. We're here on the sandy beach. Being really bear aware because there's a lot, lot, lot of a lot of grizzlies in this area. And we're right at the mouth of a little salmon creek. So have to pay attention to that. Here's the tender anchored out for surf with the bow out. from our dinghy ride and the kids are clearly super excited to see us. Jumped right up and everything. Oh, well, at least they woke up. There you go. I'm going to take a moment to get my tall photo camera. Okay. White rock. Oh, oh, they're right on the rock. Five of them right there together. Yeah. Anchored in El Cove, it's about lunchtime. Just finished our big dinghy tour. 
and doing one of the things that we do every day and that is uh, going to the computer with our sat connection and downloading current weather so we can continue to watch the weather so when it's done downloading I'll show you what it, it uh, says it's a Saturday morning Saturday noon right now and I think we're kind of expecting some significant wind tomorrow so we're not planning on going anywhere but we still take a look well, we've downloaded predict wind we have four different models we're working with if I can show you this it's showing the current wind is about 11 knots at our location it's this little black box with the information if we run the model forward remembering red is kind of not so good we can see a lot is going to happen here the wind according to the PWG model it's going to build to 26 knots by tomorrow afternoon and really not decrease until overnight Sunday night and then start decreasing if we jump back to current real time check model 2 PWE model it shows current wind at 12 knots and then continuing to start to seriously build to a height of about 25 knots. Now this is sustained winds, not gust. So uh, gust would be higher uh, with the thought that it's uh, going to dissipate by Monday morning. So it looks like we have a solid 24 hours of wind. It'll be interesting to see how it comes out. If we look at actual gust maps, it's going to show the wind uh, gusting to 35 where we are, and then dropping off. So I think it'll just be a wait and see how it all pans out. We're going to stay where we are. We're in a pretty tight little cove. This doesn't show chart detail here. But if I click right over to time zero, Sea Venture is sitting right here in L Cove, right here on the screen. And if we pan way out, where the big yellow dot here is where we are, wind is expected to come this direction. So I think we're about as good as we can be. We're surrounded by cliffs. I think we'll just have to be uh, fully prepared for a Pretty darn windy day tomorrow at Anchor here in El Cove. In the pilot house on Anchor Watch. 2.11 a.m. Maintaining sustained winds now. Of 13 gust to 30 in our little anchorage. So we can see ourselves in the circle. The goal here is just to have uh, someone always up and alert, kind of spatially aware, so we're ready to take action. If we were to have some surprise and something not work, or we start to drag on the anchor or something. Um, winds have been settling out. Um, Looks like it's 10 right now, 10, 12, 14, 15. Um, it's been sitting pretty steady, 15 to 18 knots. We've had some gusts up as high as 33 knots. Um, and we've had about an inch of rain, about nine tenths of an inch of rain. Oh, there. Hey, pal. Hey, bud. Hi. Hi. Hey. Aren't you pretty? Come on, 
the surface again? Yes. Hey, buddy. We continue to hang out in El Cove uh, through this windstorm that's been pretty intense actually. It's uh, raining now, 4.40 in the afternoon, our anchor watch. We maintained an anchor watch during the night, Rosie and I took turns because it was blowing pretty hard. If we look at our weather station graphing, yeah, you can't see what all that is, but uh, looks like the very peak of the winds. We're between 30 and 35 knots here in the Anchorage. We have been communicating with some of our friends. I think all cruising boats are hunkered down somewhere here for about 48 hours. Why this big wind comes through. But it's so far so good, all going well. It's just kind of tiring. This storm was much stronger than the normal August summer winds and made quite a news story in the region. Hold on, stop, stop the film. In our 27 years of boating in the North Pacific, we have never had a grizzly bear swim past the boat. Part of daily living, except for Barkley, it's like six times a day. Yeah. He needs playtime. He has lots of energy. Good morning, just before 7 a.m. Coffee's brewing, morning after our windstorm uh, here in Elk Cove that we endured, <laughs> but we're fine. It lasted about 24 hours of sustained winds around between 15 and 20 knots in this anchorage, which is pretty remarkable. It's very high hills all around us. The boat stayed pretty clearly put. The green circle is an anchor, anchor alarm that the boat moves outside that circle. Um, a very loud alarm goes off. This over here is where we originally anchored in the calm and the wind blew from in this direction. And as a result, moved us over into here when the wind was blowing about 10 knots and then pulled the chain all the way back to this area when it was blowing 20 or more. Uh, but uh, this morning, nice and calm. So hopefully the water's calm and you have them straight again this morning. This kind of 20 knot sustained for 24 hours would make a very large seas. Predict wind was showing six to eight foot seas on 
a five to six second interval in Chatham Strait, which is right outside the anchorage. And on the west coast of Baranoff Island was showing 15 to 20 foot seas, uh, six to seven seconds apart. So uh, that would not be uh, the kind of seas any vessel would really want to be in. But now I heard the coffee maker beep, so time for coffee. Light rain, as I said, time for coffee. I never really have given a detailed tour of the galley since we rebuilt it. Here's uh, some of our, looks like I can turn on some lights. Our upper cabinets, new countertops, lower cabinets. So I built all these cabinets out of a pile of raw teak. So it took me a long time, but I enjoy the woodwork, and so that was very nice. So this morning we're having our coffee. And since we enjoy our coffee, and uh, following Rosie's rule of I'm not camping, that's not a lifestyle of choice, uh, we do have over here our coffee maker, which is built into the wall. It's hard plumbed and uh, powered, and so you don't have to add water or anything. And it is built so this is a latch, so it locks in place. So you do not have to uh, worry about the pot moving around with uh, 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 when you're underway and with our new electrical system and lithium batteries of course it's no big deal it draws about 1500 watts to make coffee from the batteries okay we're ready to uh, depart Elko so I thought I would uh, take you through the process with a GoPro attached to my forehead on the engine starting uh, process that we go through on Sea Venture. So I've got both the throttles disengaged from the transmissions and fully forward here. It allows, gives me engine control, throttle control in the engine room because I don't, I could start the engines right here, but I don't, I start them in the engine room. So this is the door on the outside of the boat that you open and lo and behold is a ladder into the engine room. And if you haven't, there's a complete tour on the engine room. Though admittedly that tour is a little bit old and was done before the new electrical panel and before all the electrical upgrades, which mostly occurred here in the engine room. So I'm working on a little video. So here we go into the engine room with our two engines. Hopefully the camera's angled good. Pretty easy process here. Here's start button over here. Welcome to another session of our Q&A where we answer questions that you've asked on either uh, YouTube or by emailing us at cruisingseaventure at gmail.com. Sorry if you hear a bunch of background noise. We're in a yard right now out of the water and the last question will cover why we're out of the yard because it happens to be related uh, to that. Our first question was from Rob. Where did the name Sea Venture come from? Well, Rob, we, what can I, we made it up. Uh, it was not the name of the boat when we when we bought her, but we kind of wanted to go to an adventure at sea, and so we picked the name Sea Venture. That was about it. Rob did ask if it was related to the famous uh, boat in 1806 named Sea Venture, and uh, <clears throat> there's actually a book about that. And of course, we had that book on board. The sailing ship Sea Venture was the lead ship in a resupply mission to Jamestown, to the, the colony at Jamestown, and uh, she sunk in Bermuda. So we don't want to be like that sea venture. But everyone did survive, and they tucked the wreckage and managed to build another ship out of it and sail on and uh, finally make it to Jamestown. Great book, a great read, but not related. But anyway, that's, your, that's the answer to your question. Next question, Roger asked, what cruising guides do you use for British Columbia and Alaska? And another great question, and I'll start with Alaska. We, 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 we use the Douglas's Guide to Cruising Alaska. This, uh, I think maybe the only cruising book we have on Alaska. A great amount of detail and stuff in it. Uh, related to British Columbia, and a more extensive review of cruising books we use is actually a question that I answered before. It was in episode 40, boating along 3,000 foot cliffs along Alaska's fjords. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll put a link to it. 
I think it comes up in this corner of the screen. I think. Anyway, up there, if I got that corner right. If I'm pointing in the wrong corner, oh well, sorry. Uh, and um, so you don't have to go through the whole video. If you just want to go find that particular answer to the Q&A, it's right at the 16 minute mark in the video. We're at our final question uh, for today's Q&A. Wayne asks, why are you installing a bulbous bow? What a great insightful question. This question comes from in the last video we did where I showed you a new feature where you can go to the description below and click a link and see where SeaVenture is right now. If you do that, we post some comments and photos of what's currently going on and I posted a photo of our bulbous bow project underway. So great question, Wayne. I will do a complete tech talk on the bulbous bow edition that goes over in a lot more detail, but the short, quick answer to the question is that the primary reason we're adding a bulbous bow is to reduce the pitching or the up and down motion of the boat. You've recently seen in some videos that can be a pretty aggressive motion in Sea Venture, and the bulbous bow dampens that motion quite a bit. A second reason to add the bulbous bow is it does make the boat move through the water a little more efficiently for a variety of reasons that can increase your range or reduce your fuel cost and we'll go over that in detail in the tech talk as well. And then the third potential benefit is just one heck of a bumper on the front of the boat uh, for hitting something and, and uh, or pushing carefully through the ice and we'll talk more about that as well later on. But that's the basic reasons why we're adding the bulbous bow to Sea Venture. So, that's going to wrap it up for our Q&A. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or ask uh, by emailing us at cruisingseaventure at gmail.com. Otherwise, wishing you all no wind and flat seas. Bye for now.